one another. Happy New Year! 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 So I'm going to start by doing a special activity, okay? Uh, thumbs up and down, <laughs> you know this one. Okay, if you agree with me, this is thumbs up, yes, means yes. If you don't agree with me, thumbs down, okay? So show me your thumb when I uh, say it, okay? Um, okay, I'm going to tell you about this person, and please put your thumbs up if you think this person is happy. Thumbs down if you think this person is not happy. Okay? This person has all the power of and wealth of this of this world. Okay? Uh, he faces no trials in his life. He enjoys stable and comfortable life. He never gets sick. He maintains good looks all the time. Alright? Okay, show me your thumbs. Do you think he's happy or not? <laughs> no? Okay. I'll stay neutral. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, the person that I just read to you is a mummy. <laughs> you know a mummy? A mummy is a dead person, right? Usually a royal family, they, they would make a royal family into a mummy. Um, it, they make it special so that their body will not decay. Okay, it stays like, like that and for decades. Now, do you think, do you, do you still think that mommy is happy? No. Why? Because mommy has no life. It's, he's dead or she's dead. Okay, so uh, without life, the person, this person cannot feel any pain, feel any joy, feel sadness, nothing. And we can't say this person, the money is happy, right? Okay, now when God created us, God wants, God wanted his children, his uh, created being to, to enjoy life and to, uh, to feel alive, okay? He wanted us to be happy. And today I want you, I want to introduce a person, um, a true story of a father who, who dedicated his life to make his son feel happy and feel alive. Okay? Sometimes we mistakenly think that if we are in a state of a mummy, feeling no pain, okay, we think that we will be happy. But the reality is not, it is not true because without life, Without life, you cannot be happy. This person, um, this person's name is Dick Hoyt. Maybe you've heard of this person. Uh, the father's name is Dick Hoyt, and he had a son named Rick. Okay, he was born paralyzed. Okay, he had a handicap, and he his body was paralyzed, and he couldn't move his body. He couldn't talk. The son could only nod his head a little, okay? Uh, the parents of Rick uh, didn't give up hope on his son. They tried their best to communicate with, with their son. So with the help of professionals, uh, they were able to communicate with his son with a special computer device, okay? So he would not, he would write down a letter by nodding his head, okay? Uh, with the computer. Now, one day, the son asked the father if they could run a race together because there was a fundraising at school. Of, uh, there was a student, an uh, athlete, who became paralyzed and he wanted to help uh, that athlete. So, the, Rick, the son, asked his father if they could uh, run together as a team. This is Rick and his father, Dick, okay? After the race, after the race, this is what Rick said, the, the, the son. Dad, when I'm running, it feels like I'm not handicapped, okay? For the first time for Rick, okay, he felt free. He felt that he was as if running himself as a team. So he was very happy, and this hit uh, the father heart. 
and he decided at that time, he decided to devote his life to make his son feel happy. So, okay. Father Dick quitted his job. He started to, because he wasn't a professional runner, he started to train himself for the marathon. And he did workouts, he would run hours a day, and he would train with his son. Okay. Whenever you see the face of Rick, the son, he is very happy, right? Now, as a team, as a team, they not only participated in the marathon, but also they participated in I Ironman triathlon. Okay, so the father had to learn how to swim, how to uh, ride on a cycle, and also train for the marathon. Okay? This is how they, as a team, they swim. Okay? He was pulling the boat, okay? put his son, paralyzed son on a boat. He would pull by swimming. And then afterwards, he would carry the paralyzed son from the boat to the special wheelchair okay? for cycling. And then the last part, he would run the marathon together okay? and uh, come into the finish line. Now, as a team, as a team, they they participated in 32 Boston Marathon, okay, and lots of uh, triathlon as well. Now, if we go to uh, Rick, uh, the father Dick, in 2000, 2021, he died at the age of 80, okay, and two years later, the son died last year, 2023, at the age of 61. Okay. This is a bronze statue of Team Point. If we go to Massachusetts, the start of the marathon, uh, Mar uh, Boston Marathon, there it's dedicated on their behalf. Okay. Now, many people were touched by the dedicated love of the father, Father Dick. And I was especially touched by the father, the photo when the father carried his paralyzed son from the boat. It was very touching. And this, the scene, the picture reminded me of today's passage. Okay. The passage is from Isaiah 46, verse 3 to 4. Let's read it all together. One, two, three. Listen to me, descendants of Jacob. All the remnant of the people of Israel, you whom I have upheld since your birth and have cared since you were born, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am He. I am He who will sustain you. I made you and I will care you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Now this verse, okay? was given, this passage was given to Prophet Isaiah, okay? Prophet Isaiah was a prophet of uh, the kingdom of Judah. He received a prophecy from God. The timeline for Isaiah, okay? This is from BC 739 to BC 690, this is when uh, Isaiah, prophet Isaiah did, okay? And today's passage was fulfilled after, 170 years after his death. So to Isaiah, this passage was kind of meaningless. It wasn't for him. It wasn't for the people who was living with him. Actually, it was a prophecy for the future generation of Israel, okay? So what happened? When Isaiah, Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, was the prophet of Judah, and he prophesied uh, during the reign of King Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and King Hezekiah. Okay, these four kings. Okay, at that time, um, the situation was okay. The situation was okay of Judah, so there wasn't a, a real great hardship. But what happened? After the death of Ju after the death of Isaiah, after a hundred years after his death, what happened? Judah was destroyed by Babylon. Okay, 
And you know what happened. After the destruction of the temple, everybody was evacuated. They went into exile to Babylon. How many years? For 70 years. So people had to endure uh, Babylonian exile for 70 years. Okay? These people, those people, the remnant of Israel who had to go through all these trials, this message, today's message was for them. Okay? So this was fulfilled 170 years after the death of Prophet Isaiah. Okay? Alright. Now, what happened? What happened 170 years after the death of Isaiah? What was the situation? I've mentioned that there was the fall of Babylon. How do we know that? How do we know that it was the fall of Babylon? Because in verse 1 and 2, the former verse, it talks about the situation. I will quickly read it for you. Verse 1. Bell bows down. Nibbles stoop slow. Their idols are borne by beasts of burden. The images that are carried about are burdensome and burden for the weary. They stoop and bow down together, unable to rescue the burden. They themselves go off into captivity. Now it's talking about bell and nibble, which we are not familiar with. Okay, to help you. This is Bel, this is Nubo, the idols, the pagan idols of Babylon. The Babylonians worshipped these two idols. Bel was the sky god of Assyrians and also Babylonians. Nubo was the, the god of a scribe or god of wisdom. So the Babylonian people were worshipping these two idols. And in verse 1 and 2 it talks about these idols going into captivity. What happened? What happened? Babylon was a rising. First, it was a very strong country, it rise. And it defeated, it destroyed Judah, right? But what happened? God, God brought another nation, Persia. And Persia attacked Babylon. And these strong idols, these two pagan idols, they had to go into captivity as well. At that time, these idols were carried by animals. Okay? They were laid on animals. So you see the donkey and some the rocks over there? These are the idols. They were actually carrying them. Birds, and it was very heavy. And they were going, they were fleeing actually. They, were, they had to evacuate their temple, so they were fleeing. And the slaves were helping them, and when, when the Persian soldiers came to attack, the slaves flee. They were fleeing, running away, leaving the idols on the ground. They were, de they were deserted. Okay? So, in this context, God is, God is saying, where is your God? The Babylonian gods. Where are they? They can't save your they can't they can't save the people. They can't even save themselves. Can you see that? And God is actually making a contrast between Bel and Nubal against God of Israel. Let's see. Bel and Nubal. God says they need to be carried on animals and they cannot even save their people, nor themselves, okay? When crisis comes, when another, another nation, Persia, rises, Babylonian gods were, they couldn't save their people, they couldn't even save their lives. Whereas, God of Israel is saying, I don't need to be carried, I carry my people. I'm like the father who carries his son, okay? I carry my people, and I save my people. I rescue them, I sustain them, and I love them. This is what God is, God of Israel, is saying to the future generation of Israel, okay? Now, what was 
was the situation then? Okay, I've mentioned that the remnant of Israel, after 170 years, after the death of Isaiah, people, people lost their hometown. Everyone had to evacuate from Judah. They went as a slave to Babylon, to a foreign country. They were working as slaves. They had to endure 70 years as a slave. Do you think that they had hope? Do you think that, oh, God was listening to our prayer? Do you think they had hope and faith in God? No. Okay, they were in despair. They were, they were losing faith. And to these people, the remnant of Israel, God, it, God has given this prophecy ahead. Okay? For those who remember Isaiah's prophecy, they were able to have faith in God. Because they remember, oh, I remember. Okay? In, in 170 years later, this will happen to Israel. They, those who remembered the prophecy, they were able to have faith in God. They knew that God is going to judge the bottom ones, okay? And they knew that God is going to rescue them and have them return to their homeland. So, the benefits of God's prophecy, okay, there's two things. Number one, Israel was assured of God's love in the midst of trials, okay? They Israel was assured of God. What kind of God was, was he? God revealed himself as carrying his people. Father carrying his son. God has revealed himself as carrying Israel in his arms. Okay? From birth to the old age. Number two, Israel was able to endure the suffering knowing that God is in control. Okay? So, Way beforehand, God already foretold them, by prophecy, I am going to do this. I am going to judge the Babylons. Okay? He prophesies it. And Israel knew that. And because, because of that, they were able to endure the 70 years of exile. Because knowing that God was in control of history. Okay? So, brothers and sisters in Christ, this prophecy, today's prophecy, not only applies to the remnants of Israel, it's also for us too, the future generation of Israel. Okay? Do you think, are you afraid of your future? Are you, are you afraid that oh, it's going to get hard, it's going to get tough? Okay? I'm going to get weak. My health, there's failures in health, economic failure. Are you afraid of that? Don't be because, okay, because God revealed himself as a caring God. He carries us no matter what we go through, no matter how hard life gets. It's okay because God is going to carry you through it. And number two, we are able to endure that, that trial. We can endure it. Why? Because we know that God is in control, okay? God knows the beginning and the end. Amen.